on terror began more than 20 years ago with the Bush administration. And the whole point was to root out terrorism globally. And as you might already suspect, that war on terror has been a complete and utter disaster. But did you know that it actually significantly increased the number of global terror organizations? And who knows, maybe that is part of the design. Now, there was a great piece written in Jacobin by Nick Terse, and I wanna give you a few excerpts of it because he did a really great job in detailing just how much of a failure this war on terror really ended up being. He writes that the State Department had counted nearly 32 foreign terrorist organizations scattered around the world when the 20, uh, 2001 AUMF was passed. Um, and real quick pause on that, the AUMF of course gave the executive branch uh, unilateral power to essentially wage war across the globe. 20 years of war, around $6 trillion and nearly 1 million corpses later, the number of terrorist groups according to that congressionally mandated um, report, stands at 69. So we went from 32 foreign terrorist organizations, Jenk, to 69 today, and that's according to a new report. Now, a little more information on the AUMF. In the two decades since, that 2001 authorization for use of military force has been formally invoked to justify counterterrorism operations, including ground combat, airstrikes, detention, and the support of partner militaries in 22 countries. So this wasn't just about Iraq and Afghanistan. This was essentially a way to provide additional power, unilateral power to the executive branch. And when you have that unchecked power, what ends up happening? This ends up happening. The United States wages war or engages in wars in literally dozens of countries around the world without the majority of the population even knowing about it. Many of these countries, by the way, are in Africa, including Mali, Niger, and also Kenya. So Niger, I mean, so few war on terror watchers would, for example, be shocked to see Libya on the list of countries where the authorization was used to justify airstrikes or ground operations. They might, however, be surprised by the date cited as it was only invoked to cover military operations in 2013 and then from 2015 to 2019. So just when you thought that the United States was done completely destroying Libya, we weren't done yet. We were actually still involved in Libya between 2015 and 2019. And guess what? Biden continues these failed policies. While we did give him some credit for pulling troops out of Afghanistan, he recently wrote a letter to Congress letting them know to rest easy because the failed US foreign policies of previous administrations continues. Last month, in fact, Biden informed Congress that troops continue detention operations at Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, and support counterterrorism operations by the armed forces of the Philippines. He also assured Congress that the American people, Congress and the American people, that the United States, quote, remains postured to address threats in Afghanistan. Um, continues its ground missions and airstrikes in Iraq and Syria and has forces deployed to Yemen to conduct operations against Al Qaeda. And there's much more to that, which I can get to a little later, but I wanted to get your thoughts first, Cenk. Okay, there's two other devastating stats here. So the first authorization included $40 billion in funding. And they basically implied that'll do it. You know what it's cost now? All of these different operations, $5.8 trillion. So we wasted $6 trillion and created twice as many, way more than twice as many terrorist groups. And they said we were gonna wipe out terrorism. We increased terrorism. I'm gonna get to why in a second, okay? How many people have died in all of these operations? About a million. We killed them, we've spent $6 trillion killing a million people, which led to far more terrorism rather than less terrorism. So any rational policy person would look at this and go, well, obviously this didn't work. And it's not like we barely tried it, we tried it for 20 years. 
There's no question that it is a spectacular failure. It's one of the biggest failures in American policy history. Yet everyone in Washington, both Republicans and Democrats say no. They look at the same exact numbers and go, nailed it, let's keep it going. Mm -hmm. No, that makes no rational sense. Hence, there's gotta be a different explanation. Like when you go to the right wing, they'll say, "Oh, it's the Soros's and the lasers and whatever the hell, you know, insane theory they have. We on the left have a different theory. It's called money. Wow, we're such great journalists. It, I'm saying that sarcastically about us because it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out, hey, that 5.8 trillion went somewhere. And it went to defense contractors, that got about a third of it at a, the top five alone. We did in a story last week, got 2.1 trillion. So that's about a third of the money over $2 trillion went to guys who have hundreds and hundreds of lobbyists and give millions of dollars to American politicians. But I'm sure that's a startling coincidence. Otherwise, all the other reporters in the country would have covered it, right? And look, the failures, and this is me, speculating, but I think this is an educated guess. The failures of the war on terror, it's not a flaw in policy. I really think that this is a feature of the policy. I don't think that the United States government, I don't think the Pentagon, the Defense Department looks at these failures as, oh wow, I think we need to maybe recalibrate our approach here. They see this as fantastic, it's working the way it's supposed to work. Which means year after year, Congress can continue approving more and more, appropriating more and more of our resources toward defense spending. And while we continue failing, we'll get rewarded for that with additional funding, right? Look, there's an entire industry that profits off of war as we've talked about so many times before. So this is not the bug, this is the feature. And what we're seeing now is the exact opposite of what the American people have been sold in regard to our system of government and how we have checks and balances. In regard to foreign policy, there are no checks, there are no balances. The only checks that we see in the system are those being sent from Congress to private military contractors, period. That's all it is. And so, Anna, again, our points are not about us, but they're, they're indisputable. They just are, it's just facts. So do you, here, I can prove it. Do you see nightly coverage of um, our troops that got killed in Africa? You might be thinking, what do you mean? What troops that got killed in Africa? Yeah, we've had troops killed several times in different uh, African countries. And it's almost never reported uh, and it's certainly not emphasized. Um, we've got over 3000 troops in Jordan, did you know that? We've got over 2000 troops in Saudi Arabia. We've got all these troops everywhere and sometimes they die because they're in the middle of conflicts. But no, 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 no. If you listen to the Democratic Party, they are not conflicts or hostilities. When we launched 243 Hellfire missiles in Libya, the Obama administration said that did not qualify as quote hostilities. If you're on the business end of a Hellfire missile, I guarantee you, you would classify it as a hostility. So we launched, they're called Hellfire missiles. We launched hundreds of them and and politicians say, no, that's not a hostility. And the reporters go, yes, sir, absolutely, sir. That is not hostile. No, those when it landed, it spread out rainbows and flowers everywhere. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.